Today we're going to have a look at a fun technique morphing two objects within a lathe nerve. We are going to be taking full advantage of a couple of the MoGraph effectors and also having a bit of a play with the tracer object. <laughs> to demonstrate this technique I thought it would be fun to build up an animation morphing between the classic Coke bottle and the Coke can. Can we say that? <laughs> Let's take a look at what we're going to create and then dive straight in. Yeah, Coke? Yeah, yeah. no, we won't mention it again. Alright guys, now that we've had a look, let's dive in and start start building this up. So like I said, we're going to have a play morphing two objects within a lathe nerb. So what the lathe nerb will do for us is give us a cylindrical wrap of our spline. So I'm just starting off in Photoshop here, creating two splines based off a couple of reference shots I've got of the Coke bottle on the Coke can. Now because we're using the lathe nerb, we only need to get a spline of half of our objects here. So I'm just going to come all the way down one side and then I'll just stop halfway through the base of our reference shot here. So I'm just going to work through these two reference shots and then we'll take them into cinema and start setting this up. Now that we've got our spines inside cinema, let's drop them into the one layer and I'm just going to zero out their position here. Hitting S in the viewport to center them up. I'm just going to dive into my four views, soloing out the front view here, and I'm just going to pull these up so both our splines start on that zero point. You can see our can is just a little bit higher, so I'll grab that and I'll just pull that down as well, just so they're both on the, just so they're both on that zero plane of X. Nice. So we're going to use these two splines as a bit of a reference. But first, let's drop them into a lathe nerve so you can see how these come together. So if I drop this bottle spline into the lathe, you can see how this starts to work. We haven't quite set this up right, so let's turn that lathe off for a second, and we're just going to reposition our splines a little bit here. Diving back into our four views, into our front view again, and you can see what we need is for both these splines to start on that midpoint right on that Y axis. So I'm just going to slide these over a bit. And now you can see when we dive back into our perspective view here, turn on that lathe nerve, we get a pretty good looking base of our Coke bottle here. Now we can pull back up our reference shot here just to compare how our model is coming out compared to that reference shot. And you can see our bottle here, it's just, it's, we're not getting that top lip like we are in that reference shot. So we can come in here and still edit this spline. So if I turn that lathe off, have our bottle spline selected, you can see we've got a couple of points at the top here. And perhaps we just need to add an extra point so we can get a bit more of a lip. So I'm just going to use the knife tool, make a cut, and then just reposition that new point. And you can see we already start to create that lip on the top of this bottle. Now I'm just going to swap this bottle spline out for the can just so we can have a look at how that's coming together. Make sure we're happy with that one too. You can see here, this is looking good, but you can see right on the top here, our, um, our geometry is just turning completely black. And you can see even if I change our caps on it, we're still getting that black, we're still getting that black cap here. And I'll show you why that's happening. Our middle point of our spline is going beyond the midway point of the Y axis. So what we can do is just grab that spline and grab that middle point and we'll just pull it back a bit. We'll grab that point and just move it away from that Y axis. And you can see as soon as I do that, our geometry comes back. And this is looking good. Both these splines will work as a nice base for us. Now there's a couple more steps we need to take. These splines are going to be used purely for reference. And I'll explain a bit more about that a bit later. But what we need to do is create two new splines based off these ones with the exact same amount of points. So let's have a look at how we're going to do that. 
let's grab ourselves a matrix object and we'll just rename this and this one's going to be our matrix can object. So if I change our mode to object, drop in our can spline, you can see we now start generating these matrices on top of that spline. So if I change our distribution to even, turn off loop so we get one on both ends here and we'll just increase the count. And the count here is going to work as points on our new spline. So let's grab ourselves a tracer object and in our tracer link make sure the matrix can has gone in there and what we're going to do is connect all objects. You can see we've now created a new spline based on the count of our points here. So by increasing the count we get more detail into our tracer spline. So if we turn back on that can spline, you can see we're just not getting the same amount of detail as we are in the top of, in the top lip. So let's go back into our count and let's increase this. And you can see the more I increase this, the more detail we're going to get. So what we need to do now is put that tracer into our original lathe nerb. And that's now going to generate our can that we saw earlier. And you can see we're losing a bit of that detail on the top. So I'm just going to increase this count even more. And I think that's looking better. So now that we've got this matrix set up, I'm just going to duplicate it because we've already got that count set up and we need this to be exact. So let's take this matrix and we'll rename it bottle. And the only thing I'm going to do here is clear our can from our object and, and I'm going to replace that with our bottle spline. And if I turn that on, you can now see we've created these new points along that spline. So what we'll do, we'll dive into our tracer, replace it with our new matrix object, and now I've got the classic code bottle to start here with. Now comes the fun part of how we're going to transition between these two. And to do that, we're going to go into our MoGraph effectors, and we're going to have a play with the inheritance effector. Now because we had our matrix bottle selected, that should have gone into our effectors. We'll just double check that, and it has. So in our inheritance here, what we want that to do is say, you are the matrix bottle, but what you're going to do is inherit the information from the matrix can and morph between the two. So let's tick morph motion object. And you can see now, if I just play with this strength here, we get this nice morphing between those two matrix objects within that lathe nerve based off that tracer. And this is really cool. Now, as well as playing with the strength here, what we can also do is give it some fall off to create some really interesting animation. So let's grab ourselves a linear fall off here and we'll just have a bit of a look at how these are gonna work. So with the X here, you can see that more from the side rather than just all organically. What could be really cool is if we can get this morphing from top down and down up, this could look really cool. So let's change our orientation here to Y and I'm just gonna pull it down so it's beneath our bottle to start with. Now with that selected on that zero frame, let's add ourselves a keyframe. And let's just see whereabouts that point is that we're gonna morph between the can here. And it's about, looks like it's about between 600 and 700. So let's move it about forward about 30 frames, pull up, pull up our fall off and add another keyframe. Let's have a look at that and you can see how we've now got this morphing. Maybe it was a bit quick. So let's move that along to about 40 frames. So now I'm going to show you how we can create this nice spring effect to create a more organic animation. So to do that, I'm going to grab our matrix bottle, go into our effectors and add a delay effector. Now in here, I'm going to change our mode to spring and increase our strength to about 75%. Now watch what happens when I press play now. We get this nice organic morphing between that Coke bottle to the Coke can and it creates this really nice fluid animation. Now the only thing left to do now is close off this loop. Let's bring it back, morph it back into that Coke bottle to start with and to create that nice looping animation. So what I'm gonna do is dive into our inheritance here, add a keyframe at about 90, move forward about 40 frames and pull it back down to its original starting position. Add another keyframe and let's see how that looks.
we morph into the can and then return back to the Coke bottle. And that's quite, it's quite a fun little animation there. Only a couple of keyframes and we let Cinema do a lot of the hard work there, creating this nice organic motion just using that delay effector. All right, guys, hope you had a bit of fun. Hope you can take something away from that one. This is a great, fun, easy technique to set up. And, uh, and I'll see you next time, guys. All right, cheers.